All right, pleased to be joined now by Leo Stoltz from UCLA. Leo, how are you this morning? I'm doing good, fine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for being with us. Uh, so tell us a little bit. Uh, let's go back to last season. Uh, a very good season for the Bruins. Uh, you know, 12-3 and 5. Didn't lose, I don't think, you know, after October. Um, when you look back on the season, what are your thoughts? Um, I think we had like we got really into it like as a team um, started off well and had a really good season up, up to the playoffs and went into the NCAA tournament as a number one and then even then like in the second round I think we beat Elon like really high which was great and then surprisingly we lost against the Yukon like um, leading with 2-0 after like 10 minutes and then giving that up was just not the way we wanted to finish the season. How did that propel you guys into the off season? You know, um, obviously you lose in PKs. It, you know, it's a tie, but it feels a lot like a loss because you don't advance, obviously. But uh, how did that spur you guys off on in the uh, off season? I mean, like we go, as a team, we got like, just closer together, and um, the coaches analyzed what we did wrong, and they, um, we they created like a plan for us how we're gonna approach this season to avoid like a mistake like this. What about uh, that approach? What what kinds of things are in that approach? Um, like it's just more a lot more like individual. Like what it's more specific. What expectations there are like for individuals and for the group in general, and um, like more more exactly. What they're they're, try, they're trying to teach us with what we what they exactly want us to do. So right. we have one. Yeah. So scoring wasn't an issue for you guys last year. Uh, I think you only shut out once, and it was the first game against Indiana, I believe. Um, so is part of that, uh, you know, not a defensive focus because obviously you want to score goals, but making sure you're disciplined in where you are and so you don't maybe give up some soft ones? Um, like, yeah, last year we had like a pretty good offense, and like we, we're just working on it to be in a better defensive shape than last year, I guess. All right. Uh, on collegesoccernews.com, Ben Roth uh, went over one of, uh, some of the top number 10s in the country, and obviously you were on that list, um, a Herman Trophy finalist last year on the watch list this year. Uh, how have you handled that kind of attention? Um, I'm honored that I get all of the attention, but like, for me the most important thing is that we do well as a team and play great soccer. How important uh, as a senior? What? How do you take on that role? You know, obviously you're in the midfield making plays, um, but you're also going to be counted on because you're going to have the ball a lot uh, of, of making plays and being a leader. How have you approached that? Um, I mean, I'm I'm aware of my role and like I just try to step up and help the underclassmen, like to like to, to them to, uh, to to do as well as possible and make it easy as easy as as possible for them on the field and just talk to them, give them advice, and uh, just try to be a leader on the field. How about last year? Uh, it was called a, you know, a breakthrough year for you. You went four goals as a freshman, and then, then no goals, and then 11 goals. And obviously, you've, you've had assists in all those years, and your assist numbers went, went up last year as well. Did anything click for you? Um, my, I, I just played a different position. Like My freshman and sophomore year, I played as a defensive midfielder. And my interpretation of this role is just entirely differently than as a number 10. Like now, I have a lot more freedom offensively. Uh, I, had, I had a lot more freedom offensively last year than I had the years before where you just have to hold the position in front of the, uh, in front of the defenders. And last year, I was, just, I was pretty much like the second most offensive guy on the team, like after all forward. What precipitated that change? What led to that change in, in your role in moving you more um, forward? It was Jorge's idea. Like he saw me more as a number ten, and like it took me a, a little bit, like an off season, to to um, understand the position and the role. And he helped me um, to get an understanding, and it, yeah, it worked well last year. What kind of a, a mindset did you have to have? I mean, obviously you had been distributing the ball, but now to actually put it in the net, did you actually change your mindset a little bit? And, and, and you know, obviously you had the freedom to go forward, but you know, tell us about that a little bit. Um, it just it just went differently. Like as a d defensive mid midfielder, you drop in and like play pretty much right in front of all the four, defen four defenders. And as an attacking midfielder, like it's, I more often get the balls from like either the, the defensive midfielder or the left and um, right midfielders. And 
yeah, I guess that's the biggest change. Let's go back to you coming to the United States and uh, you know starting out um, on the East Coast and then going to the West Coast. Uh, first, how about that move from Germany uh, to the United States? What what was uh, your thought process with that? Um, like my the main reason why I wanted to come to the US is because the system here is just um, idle for what I was looking for. Like it's a great you can combine academics with athletics. And in, in beginning in, the, in on the East Coast was just pretty tough because my English was really bad and I had a hard time to understand people on and off the field. And yeah, and now after like living here for a little bit, it's just everything just got much easier. How about the change in transferring to UCLA? What uh, kind of led to that decision? Um, it, it was actually my dad who went to UC San Diego for studied abroad in California and he. Um, he was the one who also suggested like studying in the United States, and if yeah, from the very beginning on, he w really wanted me to go to school on the, on the West Coast, and took me the, over, over there during Thanksgiving, and yeah, I just loved it out there. <laughs> yeah. And decided I, I can to imagine through school. I can imagine uh, that you would uh, like the weather out there and everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, the soccer system in the United uh, States. You said that uh, uh, you said that you embrace. The kind of co combination of athletics and academics, and in the United States, it's kind of seen as a, uh, as a, almost like a hurdle or a, a, you know a, an impediment to improving in the in as a country. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I think it really depends what you want to do. If like if you want to go as far as possible in soccer, I guess the best way is just to focus on that. But um, like m most most soccer players, they just don't make enough. Like they don't make make enough money to uh, um, like l live off soccer for the rest of their lives. So they can't, like everybody has to rely on an education, and that's why I think it's just much. All the college soccer players are much better off like doing both instead of like just focusing on one thing. Like it might work out for the very few people that actually end up like playing on the highest level, but all the other people like it's just um, easier and more reliable way to go, I guess. There, there's been a lot of talk about extending the season of college soccer. Have you uh, heard about that? What are your thoughts on uh, that? those proposed, uh, the new schedule? I heard about it and I think it's a great idea. It's just, I, I think for players and um, so student athletes, it's sometimes just a little bit too much. They're playing, playing on Friday and Saturday. And I think college games would have a higher quality if the, game, if, if the schedule was a little bit more spread out. So there's just one game that teams can focus on instead of like two games a weekend. Okay, and uh, why don't you, uh, you know, UCLA had another top-ranked recruiting class. You've been with the guys for a little bit already starting the season next week. What have you seen so far, not just from, you know, uh, the returners that you kind of know what to expect from, but also the, the new faces that have been brought on the campus? The freshmen are doing really well. Like, I'm really excited to play with all of them. They really embrace the system that we play here at UCLA. They want to like when most of them want to get playing time and they keep it very, keep it simple they're very open to suggestions suggestions from the coaches and seniors as well so yeah i'm, I'm very excited to play with these kids with these kids what about the depth that you all are building there now and that's one of the things of the college game that's a little bit different um how is the depth looking on your squad um i think very good in comparison to the years before it's just like like you said, the, the freshman classes. They they all they have a bunch of like really good players, and there will be a lot of competition for those for the spots on the field. All right, Leo. I think that's all I got. Are you uh, still uh, enjoying the World Cup victory? Um, yeah, a little bit. Like I'm excited now for the new season for Bayern Munich. They actually have their season op opener in a couple hours, so. All right. We'll see how all these World Cup guys are doing. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you get back uh, from training in time to see it. And uh, thanks for spending some time with us here this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.